So, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to see you all. And uh, I will be talking about tax havens and about corporate and tax restructuring. And I have prepared it for you in the form of game. So we see here the battlefield. It's a um, classification of countries, which you usually choose where to incorporate your company and where from to lead your business and where to earn money and where to tax money. Um, there are a few, few more countries, few more, a few more countries in this classification, but uh, here you will see just the main, uh, main countries. So it's um, um, on the upper road, uh, upper row, it's uh, offshore countries. Um, there are several types of show countries with exchange of information, like BVI, for example, or uh, Belize is trying to do the same. A majority of offshore countries exchanging information with other states. It's uh, offshore countries with limited exchange of information and offshore countries with uh, non-exchange of information. Um, in few years, I'm afraid, it, such countries will not exist. The middle row is uh, uh, about countries with special taxation regimes, which are very comfortable to do business uh, in, but um, not everybody is uh, living in this country, not everybody is doing business in this country. Like, for example, country with territorial system of taxation, uh, the uh, letter T is about this, uh, like Malta, um, country with, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, territorial system of taxation like Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, imputation system like Malta, when uh, taxation happens um, at the stage of payment of dividends, and uh, special regimes. There are a few uh, countries which can be very interesting for software developers and software publishers. Like, like Luxembourg, for example, with special intellectual property taxation regime, uh, which gives um, quite low tax rates for uh, royalty payments, for licensing of software games, uh, or any other software products. Uh, or, for example, Cyprus, uh, which also has special taxation regime for uh, royalty payments from software, from any other intellectual property. And on the lower row, you can see normal countries uh, like, for example, Germany, France, many others. And these countries also uh, can differ. Some countries can have very high corporate taxation, but quite low level of social security taxation and uh, low level of personal taxation. Some countries have high level of uh, all types of taxation, like social security um, contributions, corporate taxes, and income tax. Some countries have average level of taxation. Um, I would say that such countries doesn't exist in European Union uh, because uh, social security contributions are quite high in every European country. They're all above 30%. Um, you can see such countries uh, in Asia, like for example, Thailand, which has uh, quite low level of social security contributions corporate tax and income tax. And some software developers uh, relocate there uh, just uh, not because of climate, uh, not because of uh, infrastructure, uh, but also because of uh, tax reasons. But normally, um, normally, we situate in a country with high level of social security contributions, high level of uh, personal income tax, and high level of corporate tax. So what you do if you situate there? Um, is it possible to cut some, uh, to some extent, tax burden or not? Um, is it possible to use tax havens? Is it possible to use countries uh, which are in the middle row, like countries with territorial system of taxation, Hong Kong, Singapore? Uh, usually, uh, when we develop corporate and tax structure with uh, software developers, 
uh, including software games developers, uh, we analyze few things. And these things are like this. First of all, we need to understand what we can delegate to other country. Uh, you can see units, you can move to another country, founders, marketing department, sales department, developers, product managers, and uh, or you can only establish legal entity, company in particular country, uh, and do not relocate any people to other country, which is the bad case. And I will describe this case and tax implications of this case. And uh, another thing you can relocate um, are assets, but um, not a lot of assets software company can relocate. Uh, intangibles, uh, sometimes uh, companies, uh, they relocate legal entity, so they establish company in VDI, for example, and relocate intellectual property there and start monetization from BVI. And I will tell about, uh, to, uh, about implications, where it is possible to do, where it is not. And uh, definitely you can relocate earnings uh, if you establish company in tax haven or in the country from this middle row. Uh, like Hong Kong, Singapore, Malta, Cyprus, Luxembourg, uh, you connect your earnings to this company. And when you do restructuring, so when you choose one of these things, one of these units, and relocate it from country where you situate uh, with high taxation to another country, uh, you have some battle, some fight, with tax authorities. And tax authorities, they have particular means to attack you. And uh, usually, um, it is limited list, particular list of these uh, things they can use. Uh, every country has uh, their particular list. Uh, some countries, they are quite uh, strict, some not, so you just need to understand um, which means uh, uh, your country have and how it can attack you. And usually it's um, a particular means, like for example, controlled foreign company. So uh, like in United States, if you, have, uh, 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 if you have foreign company and this foreign company has passive income, like royalty from licenses, licenses of the games, uh, it's controlled foreign company and the general rule is that all income cannot stay in tax haven. This income shall be taxed in United States. Uh, some other countries also have these controlled foreign company rules, like Germany, for example, or Austria. Um, other countries have a corporate tax residency rule. It's another rule how they can attack you. Um, this rule means that if you only uh, relocate legal entity, in tax haven and earnings and do not relocate people there, they can say that you are, your company is a tax resident in a country where people are, not where your company is. And um, companies, they have particular means of defense, how to defend themselves. The general rule and uh, the main mean of defense is substance. So only real restructuring helps, in fact. And I will give some examples. So you will be able to ask me about this, um, about this um, means of attack. So how your country can attack uh, the ca company, your company in tax haven, and how you can defend it, because um, it's a, uh, it, it, it should be analyzed uh, in respect of particular country. So you will be able to ask me about this. And I will give examples, uh, some examples of bad solutions and some examples of uh, good solutions in tax and corporate restructuring. Here you can see bad solution. You see that all people uh, involved in the process of software development are still in a high tax country. So everybody, let's say, in Germany software developers in Germany, project managers in Germany, um, marketing department also in Germany, and everybody work, 
uh, works there. But the company is registered, let's say, in some offshore jurisdiction. Here, uh, offshore jurisdiction with non-exchange of information is chosen, but um, it's, uh, such countries doesn't really exist. So uh, let's uh, take as an example Belize or British Virgin Islands. So you have company, everybody's in Germany, but you have company in uh, British Virgin Islands, and uh, you registered intellectual property in the name of this company, and uh, you conclude agreements with publishers, uh, with other contractors, also in the name of this company. So your earnings go directly to your tax haven. Why this case is really bad solution? Because first of all, uh, you have reputational risks. Not all publishers want to work with tax haven. Some of them still do, but many of them don't. And uh, second, you have really high tax risks here. If uh, tax authorities in Germany uh, will uh, be able to see the transactions and be able to, will be able to see that everybody is working in Germany, they have 100% of uh, chance to, sta to, to state and to win that company, offshore company, shall be taxed in Germany and it will be taxed in Germany. Uh, so it's a pure case of tax avoidance, and uh, it has very high tax risks and very high reputational risks. And the worst case uh, is when company is incorporated in tax haven and doesn't use any advantages of tax haven. Sometimes on premonetization stage, it can be very favorable because um, in a particular countries, like for example in Germany, in Luxembourg, in Netherlands, uh, it can be more complicated to incorporate company than in offshore jurisdictions. And on premonetization state stage, um, if I want to uh, formalize. Uh, the ownership in respect of my intellectual property. If I want to formalize my relations with uh, co-founders by concluding some shareholders agreements, I can choose um, British Virgin Islands or Belize, for example, because it, it is much simpler to incorporate company there, and it is, it is much simpler to uh, establish um, and to issue different classes of shares with different rights, for example, for founders with uh, all set of rights and obligations, for uh, employees or for managers uh, who will be granted by some options, I can choose different class of shares with uh, less uh, amount of rights, with less amount of liabilities, and so on. And if I cannot do it in, in, in my country with continental system, so I definitely would be using Anglo-Saxon system and offshore jurisdiction. And um, also, important thing that, uh, for example, many continental countries, they do not have concept of vesting, uh, which is uh, gradual distribution of shares of a company um, uh, correlating with uh, particular criteria founders have to fulfill. So on premonetization stage, this can work, but on monetization stage, tax authorities can ask that every, everything would be taxed in a country where real business is done. That case, number two, is uh, when you have a legal entity offshore and you have legal entity in high tax country where everybody is situated and uh, offshore company has all money from publisher and uh, high, tax, uh, high tax company has just small amount. Uh, in this case, tax authorities, they can say that relations between uh, these two companies sh uh, should be vice versa. Uh, offshore company has, may have some small profit because nobody's there. 
and a high tax company has to have all profits because everybody is doing work there. Uh, and just uh, two last slides. Um, it's uh, examples of good solutions. For example, this is good solution. Uh, this is not very good solution from the state uh, for, uh, for for your pocket because in this case you pay more taxes. But in this case, uh, this is a legally correct solution. So you can have a legal entity. Uh, in uh, offshore jurisdiction, uh, just to regulate relations with uh, co-founders, with investors, with uh, employees uh, uh, who hold particular options. Um, but you do all business in high tax country, you have company there, and all earnings go there. And all relations with publishers also um, are in the name of this high tax company. And the last example of good solution is uh, when you actually relocate some people in another jurisdiction. For example, in a jurisdiction with a particular regime of taxation of royalty. Uh, you still have some people, like for example, software developers, uh, product managers, um, or maybe sales department in a high tax country just to develop software and to sell this software, but you relocate um, some, for example, marketing department, uh, which develops strategy, uh, how to sell, and so on. You relocate them in another country, let's say Luxembourg. And in this case, you, distribute, you allocate profit depending on functions. And if you do it correctly, uh, tax authorities uh, have no claims to you. So this is a good solution. And uh, I, I, I guess presentations will be, will be published on the website, right? And uh, here you can see just uh, your basic checklist. If you want to have corporate and tax restructuring uh, and thinking about relocation of your company in some other jurisdiction, uh, you can use this checklist, so it will be available on the website. And I will be at your disposal for your questions. It can be complicated, so it's not necessary, <laughs> not necessary to ask your questions now. Uh, I will be here, you can ask questions later. Thank you. Right, thank you, everyone.